Hello! Today's tutorial is about sewing sleeves in a bustier top and this gorgeous skirt. I was inspired by Selkia brand and a little bit of Toyota Matoshi. Also, I have a surprise for you at the end of this video, so watch it till the end and participate. So, for making this dress, I'm using organza fabric. It's polyester, quite stiff and thick in comparison to other organza fabrics. Also, I will need some interfacing lining, rigidine boning, underwrite channeling, bra making foam, an elastic, an invisible zipper, and the Rose Cafe Bustier dress pattern. I'm starting with choosing the right interfacing for the bodice. I had two options, so I concluded that it's better to choose the one without a texture, as the organza is seen through. If you are using very transparent material, I suggest making a second layer after the other base fabric and interface it. Put your organs as a top layer and then trim them like one. It's convenient to interface the whole piece of the fabric and then cut all the bodice pieces out of it. Absolutely necessary to iron on the strips of the interfacing along the top edges to prevent them from stitching. Also, I would recommend making it along the curved and the best edges as they could switch out as well. I'm assembling the bodice like usual. I'm going to sew some rigidly boning on the seam allowances to give it a little bit more structure. Use high quality originally. I have a detailed video tutorial on how to make it. Search for this video on my channel. In this video, I'm not going to dwell on this topic. But unlike this tutorial, I'm on top stitch along the boning. I'm just pressing the seam allowances close and covering the bone with it. It's just a design issue. Also, I'm making the cups at once as I usually do with foam. Assemble the cup from the outer fabric. Trim off the seam allowances except the under eye lines for the foam pieces. Cut pieces out of one layer of foam at once. Assemble the foam pieces with a wide zigzag stitch. Cover it from the wrong side with another wide channeling. I'm using it because it's fluffy and pleasant to the body. Assemble the foam cup with the outer fabric on the top, folding it over the foam top edge and understitching. Press the cup over a round pressing form to give it a round shape. I'm using another pre-made cup. I suggest pressing the fabric cup this way as well. For a detailed tutorial on how to make foam cups, see this video. Let's move to the sleeve. Here is the sleeve I'm using. I will leave the pattern in the description. You can modify it from every puff sleeve you like by making a square arm size. This is the 1 cm seam allowance. We should trim the corner to separate the seam allowances. Stop 2 mm away from the mark line. Make the same on the second side. Finish the sleeve cap edge with an overlocker stitch. Finish the overlock stitch. Finish the sleeve hem as well. Sew the sleeve seam. 
Fill the hem on the base of your elastic plus 5 mm, leaving an opening to insert it. Pin the slit to the bodice, leaving a seam allowance corner next to the front. Stitch the sleeve between the cuts with 1 cm seam allowance. Now fold the sleeve cap and stitch to create a tunnel for the elastic. You can pre-press it if it's hard for you to fold the curved edge and stitch at once. Press the hold. Insert the elastic. I'm inserting a 36 cm long elastic. You can measure how much you need or adjust it later. Secure the elastic with a perpendicular stitch. Measure your arm and insert the elastic into the sleeve cuff as well. Let's move to the skirt. I have folded the fabric in half twice. Now I have four layers with an intersection point at one of the corners. From this corner I should mark the radius which will give us the circle and it will be a waistline. But as I want the skirt to be gathered at the waist, I should double my waist measurement. To know the radius, we should refresh the math and... Mm, here is the formula. Also, we can include the seam allowance for the zipper at once, right? So we should calculate this. Also, we should include a seam allowance to attach the skirt. So I suggest just remove it in from our radius. So, 21 cm to mark from the intersection corner. For the skirt length, I am taking the fabric cliff, so I mark the maximum I can to avoid additional seams. My fabric width is 142 cm, a half of it is 71 cm, which is my second radius. One more important thing, we should reduce the skirt length on bias. So my radius right on the bias will be 2.5 cm less. I connect it with the full radius on the selvages with a smooth line. Take notches on the waist, they will help you a lot to attach the skirt. As my skirt is the one piece right now, I'm cutting it along the grain line to have a back seam. I'm going to make 26 cm wide ruffle along the skirt hem. So I'm cutting 28 cm long pieces with the full fabric width. Some lightweight fabrics allow you to rip them, which is a lot faster. I need these 6 pieces overall, which will give me a 1 to 2 gathering ratio, the same as on the waist. I'm trimming all the selvages and assembling all the pieces in one ruffle. I'm pressing the seams as well as the whole ruffle. Now it's convenient to finish the hem. I'm making a narrow hem by folding the edge twice, as little as possible. 
it will be 5 mm wide in the result. I tried to gather the ruffle with a gun foot, but as my fabric is quite stiff, I didn't like the result. So I decided to make small pleats. At the gathering ratio is 1 to 2, and 1 cm wide pleat should go every 2 cm. I haven't been measuring anything, I just have made it approximately like this. I don't need it to be perfect. So the ruffle is ready, let's attach it to the skirt. As you can see, I haven't sewn the back seam yet. It will make the ruffle attachment easier, I don't have to pin anything. If the ruffle is too long, I can adjust it on the second end. Overlock and press the seam. For the lining, I'm making a half circle skirt without a gathering on the waist. The principle is the same as the main skirt. But right now, I'm having only two layers of fabric. And for a radius calculation, I'm taking two waist circumferences because it's a half circle, not a full circle. The lining length is the same as the main circle skirt. I have finished the lining hem the same way as the ruffle. Also, I have cut the bodice pieces and assembled them as usual. Before attaching the lining to the main part along the waist, I have made the same small pleats as on the ruffle. Now I'm attaching the lining to the main skirt, joining the center notches together. Also, I'm going to make it as one layer on the back seam, because the organza skirt is transparent and I don't want the zipper to be visible. I'm finishing the center back edges with an overlocker. From now, the skirt will be treated like one layer. Time to attach the bodice to the skirt right sides together. Notches are everything, never ignore them. So, I have sewn the skirt to the bodice and finished the edge with an overlocker. Press the waist seam towards the bodice. Time to install a zipper. I have a video on my channel where I show how I sew invisible zippers. Watch it for a detailed tutorial. Here I will make everything the same, except I will sew only the bodice lining to the zipper tape. Attach the lining part to the bodice right sides together, being careful on the sleeve areas. Seam allowance should be strictly 1 cm. I suggest you sandwich the elastic into the seam, if you are sure about the elastic length already. Attach the lining to the front edges, as we do it in a posterior pattern usually. Be careful not to switch off the curved edges. Trim the corners carefully and now we have to understitch the lining as far as possible. But don't forget to trim the curved seam allowances first.
turn inside out all the corners until they are as sharp as possible. Press the edges well, make sure the lining is not rolling towards the outside. Fold 1 cm the bodice lining edge and press. Yes, I could make it earlier, when it wasn't attached yet, but I just have forgotten. Put a zipper foot and sew down the lining along the zipper tip. Keep the bodice lining on the waist pre-folded. Now cover with the pre-folded lining the waist seam allowance to have a neat round side. I'm hand stitching it and it's almost invisible. The last step is to attach cups as I have done in my previous bustier videos. This time I'm making only one stitch, one millimeter away from the underbar stitch. Press it slightly and the dress is ready! My dear subscribers, I'm so happy there's so many of you! Thank you for your support and comments, it inspires me so much! We're celebrating with 50% of all my patterns. Also, I'm giving away any of my patterns of your choice for 10 of you. To enter, just leave a meaningful comment under this video. See detailed information in the description. I wish you good luck. Thank you.